Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, Diggy546? This video is going to be Kayvon Thibodeau and Dexter Lawrence. Now, I wanted to do some secondary stuff this week, but I mean, there really weren't that many passes. Uh, Adore Jackson is struggling a little bit more. I'll try to get back to that next week. There'll probably be a lot more action going against Aaron Rodgers. But I wanted to focus on Thibodeau because I didn't get to get to him last week. And Dexter Lawrence just completely took over the game. So starting off with Thibodeau here. Number five. You got Aziz across from him, 51. And pretty much this is Thibodeau's play of the game. It's not any special rush that he did. It's not anything crazy that he did. He just kind of, you know, kind of got held up there, got blocked. But just watch him just go and get the ball. First man to the ball, everybody is kind of looking where the ball is going to go. And while they're looking for the ball, Thibodeau is running to where the ball is landing, getting on top of it. And he said in his press conference that he didn't even know that was a fumble. He thought it was a forward pass, but he just thought he should get on top of it because that's just what they teach him in practice. And because he did that, we got a turnover while they were pretty much driving. I mean, you see there at the 30 yard line they were driving get about to get some points so this is a crucial play by Thibodeau and I just wanted to highlight this because he's a rookie and that to be this aware and to be this aware compared to all the vets on the field that didn't get there in time it is it, something that you definitely got to take notice of all right so we got Thibodeau here again and this is the play we're going to revisit with Dexter Lawrence a little bit later but pretty much they collapsed the pocket Thibodeau, Ojolari, and Dexter Lawrence all collapsed the pocket and this is just a glimpse of what Thibodeau can do when he's getting out of his stance quickly, when he's being confident, when he's attacking the edge and not hesitating. This is just what he can do. So he's starting way, way, way far out from where the right tackle is. And he just gets the edge, and it's hard to be able to keep up with that. So he's just off the edge so quick. He's around the corner, hits that dip, and that dip gets his hands off of him, and he's right there to the quarterback now. If this isn't Justin Fields, if this isn't a mobile quarterback, this guy's going down right here, and he's going to get sandwiched three ways. He's probably going to be out of the game because that's a lot, of, a lot of people coming at him. But nice move by him. Again, you see Ojolari on the other side. You see Dex in the middle, who probably had the best win out of everybody. But Thibodeau, I would say this is probably his best rep so far as a pro that I've noticed. But Fields gets out of it, sadly, and, and, and makes a play out of it. Now, this is something that people have been concerned about. I've heard a lot of people saying, a, a lot of subs, a lot of Giants fans in general, saying that Thibodeau, they were scared if he could hold up in the run game. They were scared. They say he seemed skinny. First off, Thibodeau was about six foot six, six five, two hundred and sixty 260 pounds. That's about prototypical outside linebacker. Maybe he could stand to put on some more weight, but I think... That's the ideal way. He's he's of course got a little got to get a little bit stronger, got to put on some muscle. That doesn't have to come on as far as weight. He could, you know, you, you can put on muscle and lose fat. You can also just get functionally stronger without getting bigger. So, Thibodeau is lined up on the left side and you're just going to see him just make a really nice play setting the edge. Now they try to block him with the tight end, but he just holds up. And people try to say, you know, blah, 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 it's the tight end. Guess what? You block, you, you deal with who's on you, and this tight end doesn't get any ground. He gets off of him, gets picked up by the running back, and then he just ends up being on, on that tackle. So running this back right here, just so you can see, he doesn't give up anything. He makes sure he sets that edge, and he just pretty much stops that play. He's, he's the number one guy stopping that play. So on this next play, you see Thibodeau lined up at the right side of your screen. He's number five. He's in that two-point stance, no hands on the ground. And this is another thing where I think there's a misconception about the power. He has plenty of power. He's just playing against grown men. He's not going to be the guy who's, you know, he's, he's not going to be a power rusher. I just don't ever see him being a power rusher unless he puts on a, a ton of muscle. But he's got power. And he should be able to turn speed into power. The thing is, if you just go with power and you're not overwhelmingly powerful, 
you're not going to be able to win most times against these offensive tackles because guess what? Most of the time, they're going to be bigger than you. Second, they're pros and they know how to reset after being bull rushed. Unless, again, you're completely, you know, overwhelmingly more powerful than them. So let's look here. He's going to come off the edge right here. Makes, gets right into this guy's chest. Has him one foot on the ground, pushing him back. But he's able to kind of reset. The tackle right there, you see, after he kind of gets bull rushed, he's able to reset and anchor down. And you see Thibodeau start to go backwards. And this is what Thibodeau is going to start to learn, that when you have this guy here with one foot on the ground, let's go back to, to this. When he first makes contact, he's got one foot on the ground. When you got this guy this far off balance, you got to have a move. Whether it be a spin inside, a rip inside, I kind of kind of want to illustrate for you all. It could be a spin this way. It could be a rip this way. It could be, you know, a, a fake inside and go out that way. It could be a ton of moves. He talks a lot in press conferences about how many moves he has. This is when you have to show those moves off because you're not going to just be able to walk this guy back to the quarterback. He's just not going to be able to do that at this stage. So he got to he's, he's got to have some some counter moves to be able to not even a counter move, but a move to be able to string this from just being a nice bull rush to start to eventually being blocked. When I guess you can kind of count this as a pressure, but this can go from a pressure to being a sack very quickly if he's able to make that move right around here. And then this will be the last play that I show from Thibodeau, another heads up play. He's just going to realize that he's unblocked and he's going to get his hands up and swat the ball. Anytime you're unblocked coming off the edge, there's a quick pass coming. So try to get your hands up. If he's actually, I mean, this reminds me of JPP in his prime. JPP was so good at this. And of course, JJ Watt and even TJ Watt, they're so good at when they're unblocked, recognizing that the ball is going to be coming their direction and being able to catch this. Now, I'm not upset that he didn't catch it, but they, these, those guys are able to get up and catch that ball and be going the other way. Hopefully, Thibodeau can, can start doing that because he's able to recognize it. But uh, nonetheless, a good play with Thibodeau coming off the edge and uh, swatting that ball down. I let it play in real time. I know a lot of people hate when I slow it down, but I want you all to be able to see you know frame by frame. But here we go. Swat the ball. Nice play. All right, so now we're in part two of this film session. And as I said earlier, I'm going to be talking about Dexter Lawrence here. And I mean, what can I say? Dex came to play on Sunday. He really came to play. He played like how I thought that he would be able to play, you know, maybe last year or the year before. And I think really this has come from him being at the zero and getting singled up sometimes. He's at, well, right here, he's kind of at the one tech. He's, he's not really playing a zero technique, but he's playing a one tech. But a lot of times he's been playing a two tech. Uh, kind of for you all to see, this will be a zero lined up right over top of the center. Where he's lined up now is a one. You know, this so-and-so two, three tech will be here. So he's, he's played mostly the two tech. He's mostly played right here or right here. But I want him right here or right here because anytime this guy is lined up over your center... It's going to be a lot of work for this center to snap this ball and block somebody that's 340 pounds. It's just not something that you can do easily. And he's just going to completely manhandle this guy. So just watch it in real time. He's just going to just throw him, throw him into, into the lap of the quarterback. And again, if this isn't a mobile quarterback, this is a, this is a sack. This is the kind of thing that you see from Vita Vea where he just completely collapses the pocket. And Dex almost got there. So this next play, you see Dex actually lined up, as I said before, where he's lined up in the past at the two-tech, and he kind of gets doubled uh, by the center and the right guard. But he makes a nice move on this right guard here. Uh, you're not going to be able to see it very clearly, uh, but he he's able to grab this right guard's arm and really use that as an advantage to rip and get past the, get past the offensive lineman to the quarterback. So watch this here. He's going to engage. Tries to get help from the center. Uses that center's push as momentum to get around this guard. As you see right now, you might be able to see. It's, it's really pixelated. But he's actually grabbing this guy's elbow, pushing his elbow up, and then ripping past. 
and getting his hands free as you see his his hand up after he just ripped past. And now he's reaching for the quarterback, gets that first quarterback hit. So next play, 97 in the middle at the one tech again. You just got to love this. This is like a, a judo fight at the line of scrimmage. He's just going to whoop this guy. And I showed you this play from the point of view of Thibodeau, but Dex is just going to whoop this dude uh, coming out of his stance. Snaps the ball. Dex to get his hands on him. Uh, he tries to get his hands inside on Dex and just watch him. Just He has his hands inside. This play should be over, but Dex is just going to reset. <laughs> and he just did it so quickly. He's going to reset and just do some judo. Get his hands off of him. Swat that left hand off of him. Like, get them hands out of my face. Swats his hands out of the way like it's a little kid. And then just gets under this guy's uh, arm, rips past, and he's in the backfield. And, I mean, you just don't expect this from a guy that's 340 pounds. If he can play like this when Leonard Williams gets back, uh, this, this is going to be scary. Because this is a lot of man moving really fast, getting almost instant pressures. I mean, instantly. It's, it's already crazy enough that the two uh, edges got around the edge quick. But having a 340-pound man instantly right in front of you as soon as you drop back is jarring for any quarterback in the league. So, again, this is another play that you all have seen already. This is Dex lined up pretty much at the one again and kind of in the in between the zero and the one tech as he's kind of lined up there. Um, either way, he's going to come off the ball and he's kind of going to bend the edge almost from the interior because I don't know why they decided to leave him one-on-one, -on -one, but just watch him just kind of come off the ball, get his hands popping. I mean, he 67 lost pretty much every battle at the line with his hands to Dex, and he's just going to get his hands off of him again. And at this point, it's laughable. He just kind of spreads his arms to, to box him out and just kind of turns the corner and almost... This is this fumble got forced by Aziz, but he almost forces the fumble too. Just watch this in real time. One more time. Bend the edge or bend the, the center. And he's in the backfield. So on this play, you got Dexter Lawrence lined up at the three tech. Pretty much the, you know, where you would line up your pass rushing defensive tackle. And they saw that he was having such a good game. They said, why not just line him up there and see if he can get in the backfield? And he does a great job. He's going to fire off the ball. is one-on-one -on -one again, which should never happen. But he's going to get his, you know, just drive this guy back. And this is something I was talking about earlier with Kayvon Thibodeau. When you're 340 pounds, you can just walk somebody all the way back to the quarterback. He's just, because he's just not going to be able to block you one-on-one. -on -one. Just imagine being 315 pounds and blocking somebody who's 340. Or 305 pounds and blocking somebody that's 340. That's literally like you being 105 or I wouldn't say 105. It's like you being 205 and blocking somebody that's 270 or 240 or 250. It's just not going to work out. So he's just going to drive them back and the arms are flailing. The long arms are there. And there's nothing that Justin Fields can do at that point. And luckily he didn't get his ankle as, as hurt as bad as, as DJs did. But... That's a lot of that's a lot of people. That's a lot of man coming at you if you're Justin Fields. And there's just nothing you can do. If this guy's one on one, especially at three tech, where he can kind of choose a side, it's it's curtains. Curtains right here. And then watch the dance. Huh, huh, huh. Watch the dance. So I'll pause it at this frame. Uh Dex completely dominated this game from start to finish. He had two sacks. He had, I think, three quarterback hits, about seven or eight pressures. The dude was all over the place. He took over the game, and if he can be this kind of player for us, it, it, it really will help out the edges. It will help out Leonard Williams when he gets back. And this guy is someone that we absolutely need to re-sign if he can continue to play like how he's played this year. So, I mean, you, you guys see it. He's He's big. He's quick for his size. He's got good hands. He's agile for his size. The dude can do it all. I mean, I don't see him being, you know, a, a, a 12 sack guy. He's not going to be that. But he's a guy that might get you five sacks. A guy that will, will be stout against the run. 
and a guy that's going to get you a ton of pressure, and the quarterback is not going to be able to just sit back there, you know, and, and the pocket not be collapsing. So that's Dex. Uh, Kayvon Thibodeau, I showed him a little bit earlier this, this episode of film sessions on the channel. I showed him a little bit earlier. Thibodeau has got a little bit more seasoning, you know, that he has to add to his to his game. He's got to have some counter moves. He's got to have some moves that he works off of other moves. But I think he'll get more comfortable and he'll start using some of those moves he used in college. He's got the athleticism. He's got the speed. He's got to be able to turn that speed into power, not stop his feet as he's pass rushing. And I think he's going to be a good player. I think we'll start to see Kayvon Thibodeau start to come alive and, you know, week eight, week nine. I don't think he'll be a candidate this year for rookie of the year. But I'm thinking towards this end of the season, he'll really start to come alive. And next year, I think we'll really, really have a player. So you guys let me know what you're thinking of the games that Kayvon Thibodeau and Dexter Lawrence had. Both of them were very instrumental in us getting this win. Enjoy being 3-1. and one. We got Green Bay coming up. Uh, preview coming probably tomorrow or Friday. Let's, let's, let's keep it going. Let's keep the positive vibes going. Let's go out and beat Green Bay. If you made it this deep into the video, come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily, and during the season, I'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made it this deep, go ahead and join the D6 squad.